It's October 4th, and the games one are done in the NLDS series. Dodgers take game one. Cardinals take game one. We got four coming up. Let's talk all about it. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining us with another daily episode of Talking Baseball, a show to talk about baseball. My name's John Boy. I got my co-host Jake with you. He's in Denver. I'm in New Jersey. Took in two games yesterday, Jake. About to take in four today. Our team is on the line today, so it's a little bit more nerve-wracking for us. It's calm, cool, comfortable for the first four games of the postseason. Now I got knots in my stomach, and I'm feeling not feeling well before i let you talk this episode is brought to you by sam thompson sebastian green salvatore de luca that's a jakey name salvatore de luca and then james lancaster which james you messed it up because everyone was s names today so sames seamus the irish name except james lancaster very british sounding Okay, you can talk now, Jake. Hey, all right, those people are our Patreons. Thanks thanks for Seamus reaching out at the end there. Uh, Jim, you mentioned playoff knots and game one knots and nerves, yet you come out here, game one of the ALDS day, and you time that intro perfectly? Yeah, I'm getting good I with mean, my timing. I mean, that's spooky stuff. Spooky. It is. Oct- that's Gavin Lux type stuff. Gavin Lux. What a name. It's a good name. Gavin Lux. That is a good name. We got a lot to talk about, guys. Um, This is a crazy day. This is the first crazy day. I'm doing a behind-the-scenes vlog all day, too, to post it. uh, I was talking to uh, Billy, who's working at John Boy Media now, and uh, with me in the room. And I was saying, like, I want at least a picture in this room because when eventually we grow and I'm not working out of my office in my house anymore... I just want to remember it finally. And he's like, you should do a whole behind the scenes video. And I was like, you know what? Friday's going to be crazy. It's going to be like four episodes we record or three. Yeah. Plus the games. And I was like, maybe I'll do it Friday. So we're doing it today. You're on it right now. Holy smokes. Uh, Yeah, that's exciting, man. And it's, uh, I can't even wrap my mind around today yet. Obviously Yankees stuff because we are Yankees fans. Um, don't turn it off if this is your first step because we do a good job of getting rid of our bias with a couple jabs here and there. Um, but yeah, and like yesterday's two games, you know, there at, at there was a while it was like, wow, I'm six hours into baseball and now I'm standing up because I'm excited to watch Fernando Rodney pitch. <laughs> um, so I can't even imagine when it's going to be hour 12 today where I'm going to be at mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. But uh it's exciting it's it's where we want to be we're wearing we're both wearing a lot of gray today do you think there's anything behind that no i got a miller light shirt on i saw that i don't know if i've seen you rock that bad boy i think katie got it at some uh, like like she worked at a bar and i think they handed out shirts at the bar so she gave it to me because it's a large and it's like a very comfortable shirt so now i'm a repping i rep miller light and if you happen to work for Miller Lite and you want to tell your advertising department to reach out, we're fine with that. Yeah, otherwise I'll write fuck right on top of the logo, and then I'll be a fuck Miller Lite. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Whoa. Miller Lite shirt. Dude, uh, you, mentioned, see, I, you mentioned Fernando Rodney. Yes. And I know that we have to get into the actual recaps of the games and stuff, but I was rooting, and I, think, I don't care... I don't care who wins these games. I'm kind of getting the Joe Buck treatment on Twitter where, like, everyone's telling me I'm biased against their team. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Sure. I just tweet in things that I find interesting. Fernando Rodney, I was ready to make such a cool video of him walking to the mound in, like, the most don't give a fuck about anything way and then striking out Ballinger and then striking out Muncie and then walking into the dugout. Problem was he didn't strike out Muncie. He gave up, Muncie. gave up a bunch of runs and blew it. So I had to do a little different video that I posted. But yeah, what a what a treat he is. 
And I, I just, a little baseball emotion out there. Like, Fernando Rodney, he's got the sideways cap. He's been pitching since 2002, I think. He's 42. And I just think it's funny because you, you were talking about how he had that no care look on his face. There was the clip of him leaving the bullpen. It looked like he was walking to, like, go pick up dog poop. Yeah. I've never seen anyone less excited. Um, Jim, Gotta like, think fucking about, do this. Think about how much... Fernando Rodney loves baseball. He's 42 years old, still out there grinding, hitting 95 on the gun. I need like four more years of Fernando Rodney. Maybe he's got the uh, Corota effect. He doesn't love baseball. It's just all he knows. And there's only, and you know, he doesn't want to go home to his family. So he just needs to play baseball every day. That's, there's definitely a chance of that. Um, Jim, I know we, we got it. We got to get into it. 30 seconds. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited. I woke up, had a bunch of coffee. I went to sleep. Well, I, was, I tried to go to sleep early last night, but I didn't. So I tried, yeah. though. Usually I don't even try. So I got a decent amount of sleep. I'm excited. Four games. Uh, Yankees has me in a ball of nerves, like I said in the intro, but we'll get over it. There's a lot of storylines to talk about. So let's go into the recap of the two games. You ready? How are you doing? You want me to return that for you? No, I'm I'm good, man. You're you're all over it. I haven't had my Yankees nerves hit yet. That'll probably happen mid episode and it will either be great or as terrible. As soon as the roster drops. Maybe the roster drops or just I there's gonna be something that triggers it and I'm gonna like have have a quick spasm on the air. Okay, great. Excited. So the first game, Braves Cardinals. Excited for it. It's day game baseball. Are we gonna get a good one? And then our dude Michaelis nerves i'm telling you yeah. the first playoff game nerves have never been more real in my head michaelis then you got corbin game two um one of the wild card manea he got lit up right away there it's a theory that's like starting to really like work for me anyway I mean, it's real. It's the it's something one one of the few p- things you've gathered from me this season that you're like, wow, Jake, that was actually good. Stand over a six foot putt with nothing on the line. You're out there by yourself and try to sink it, and then go try to sink a six foot putt with all your buddies watching and a hundred bucks on the line. Tell me which one's harder. Yeah, because that's that's pressure. Babe. Pressure nerves um, Jim, are all real. Did you see? I did write a burn if you want it. Oh, you wrote a burn for this game. Yeah. Okay. I'll rip it quick. Rip it quick. Here we go. Gets it. Burn. St. Louis versus Atlanta with Dallas on the mind as Keichel bravely takes the pill versus I would walk 500 miles. Michaelis, Michaelis in game one of the NLDS. Bottom one when you're playing video games, but you hit the wong button. Tough inning for Colton as the Braves take a 1-0 lead. (laughs) Top five, playoff small ball alert, Harry Bader. I had my doctor remove one of those. He put St. Louis on the board. We're tied at ones into the sixth. Dansby Ron Swanson with a two-run fielder's choice of sorts. 3-1 Atlanta. Can the bullpen hold? Atlanta fans, turn your ears off. Chris Martin comes out of the pin, but he's too cold to play with an oblique injury, and this would not be a thriller for his replacement, Luke Michael Jackson. Paul Good as Goldschmidt hits a moon ball. It's 3-2. Need something fixed? Call the Carpenter as Matt hits an RBI single, and what a dart by Adam David Duvall to peg the lead run at home. Threes up. Top nine, Marcel the Shell. Ozuna drives in two down the line. Redemption, thy name is Colton. He drives in two down the other line. Seven, three cards. Carlos Santana Martinez was not too smooth. Coming in for the save. Ooh, Ron Acuna. He goes yard ski and admires it like he did his single earlier. We'll talk about that. Freddy, free your mind. The rest will follow into the drink. Been there. 7-6 ball game, but Martina shuts the door after opening it up. Cards take game one, 7-6 final. Wow. A lot of musical references. Yeah, that uh, they were coming off the fingertips pretty good. Chris I'll Martin, too cold you. to play. Do you get that one? I got it. Like, cause it was October, the weather's getting colder and it's getting chillier. He had an oblique strain, which is historically linked to colder weather. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. it was the band Coldplay. 
Tough to say. We'll never know. Yeah. All right. There's so many things to talk about in this game. Because yeah. Acuna gave us a ton of storylines. Um, first off, actual strategy. I thought the Braves... And when I say this, if you're a Braves fan, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not deep into the weeds of your pen and usage and who's lengthened and stuff. Keiko, Shane Green, and Freed could have thrown more bullets. You got yeah. Flaherty game two, and you got a terrible bullpen behind you. I know the Chris Martin injury. You cannot see that coming. But even then, Chris Martin goes an inning, and then you have two more to go and the rest is not good now also i know luke jackson isn't as bad as he was because he didn't have to get any time to warm up so it's i I know i I understand all that but in retrospect when you go shane green just for one and he looked good freed just for one i know you're trying to save him for game four but hey it's game one and jack flaherty's on the bump game two and you're in a close game and then keichel was kind of starting to to fall, falter a little bit they they national leagued him with that one run no hard hit balls but he wasn't getting his calls anymore you left some good bullets on the table in exchange for some bad ones is how i would say yeah and the, the chris martin thing is brutal because he was actually supposed to come in uh top was it top eight so if chris martin and he's, no, I thought he's it was a really seven. good pitcher um i've got it in front of me right now it's top eight um, so they were going to go Martin to. So, so they were going to go Martin, Martin Melanson. Melanson with Luke Jackson as their safety net. Instead, Luke Jackson, the safety net, comes in. Right. So, so it's not that bad. So you're right. It, it it still is tough because I mean, it, Jim, and maybe it's just we've seen more of them. But I think you mentioned those names, and the Chris Martin story is awesome. He was putting stuff on shelves, and now he's pitching, and he's been really good. So I get that. Um, I would have maybe had Shane Green as the safety net guy because Shane Green s- saved MLB games, and and I don't know, may- maybe we're missing out on it and we're just using our eye test too much, but I would trust Shane Green over Luke Jackson heading into this game. Well, Luke Jackson was their closer, and he closed a good amount of games, and then they got Shane Green to be the closer, and he kind of faltered and didn't get the job. So Right, and then Melanson kind of fell into it. But, Dude, um, Melanson... It- I don't know why I don't like him, but Melanson sucks. I know exactly it's, why I don't like him. I'm just kind of anyone can be like, those are bad reasons. And I'd be like, well, shut up about it. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. If um, anyone doesn't know, like what he you, came up as a Yankee. And when he was a rookie, he complained about how the Yankees used him out of the pen. It's like, dude, you just got called up. Shut up about yeah. it. Then they trade him. He's good. Uh, somewhere and then he goes to Boston another pressure packed like city and division and fan base and he just was terrible and needed to get out of there then he's good in like Pittsburgh then anytime he's in pressure situation he's bad and he looks just like Ray the racist from remember the Titans he can't have yeah can't have yeah that's it I mean that's a bad combo so yeah you you do get to little do a little bit of 2020 hindsight the Martin injury I mean it's brutal and I, you've heard me give this speech many times, Jim, but I, I, I'm i such a big believer in the, like, every bullpen has their pecking order, and if you trade for a guy and you make your eighth-inning guy struggling and then he becomes your seventh-inning guy, that guy becomes, like, a stud now, yeah. um, and vice versa. So Chris Martin coming out was brutal, um, and especially first pitch, Goldschmidt hitting a ball 10 miles. Second uh, pitch. That was un- he tried to throw a but, off speed first, and then it was the first fastball he just fucking cranked. But but you're absolutely right. I mean, when you have um, Keichel, who you basically brought in for this game, um, if you're going to use Max Freed out of the bullpen, who essentially when you put him in the bullpen, he becomes your best arm. He only so threw 14 use- pitches, I think. Yeah, I think it's 14, and Shane Green only threw an inning too, and it, it, it you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. We If Chris Martin came in and shoved, we could yeah. be sitting here saying, like, it, it, wow, that It really that Braves, comes down to that. That Martin injury that, was fucking brutal. Yeah, we, we could be sitting here saying, wow, that Braves bullpen really shoved and looked good. Now we're saying <laughs> they're one of the bigger question marks of the playoffs. The other storyline is Acuna, who actually had a great game. He had three hits, a home run, two RBIs, a walk. But the storyline is that he turns a double into a single. He did this in the regular season. He got benched for it. 
We talked about it on Talking Baseball. I said, hey, good to have this happen now so it doesn't happen in the postseason. Hopefully everyone like learned from it. Jake, I didn't think this was that big of a deal. I thought when they interviewed the coach and everything, you'd get your typical kind of, uh, we'll handle that behind closed doors. Um, hey, he had a great game for us. It's his first, you know, you know those cookie cutter like kind of protecting your guy answers. Yeah. Did you hear the interviews? Yeah, I did. They're bad. Like Freddie Freeman was yeah. like, that's not a conversation you should have to have twice. You're kind of beating a dead nope. horse there, and it's the postseason. This is important. And then his buddy, uh, Albies, is like, he can't can't do that. Can't yeah. do that. And then the manager, Snitker, 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 said something along the lines, we don't have enough guys to handle that. Meaning, like, because he, if he had more players, he might have benched them. I was like, oh, shit, they really don't like this. Like, this is... No a problem so if the clubhouse had his back and was like no uh you know he had a great game we wish he got to second there we'll talk to him about it hopefully it doesn't happen again but you know he's a star that's what i expected them to say they were all like no like their tone was very much no it's bullshit and it shouldn't happen so if you're acuna you, you kind of look around the room like fuck what the public says and what you and i say when your own guys in your own room are saying, dude, stop, that's that you're now letting down teammates. Because if the teammates had his back, yeah, and, it's different. And Acuna Acuna didn't necessarily give the the apology speech. He gave the like, oh, this kind of stuff happens. And it's like, oh, <laughs> not for the other guys, Ronnie. I, um, I do f- that interview with Acuna uh, in New York, he, in the Bronx, he get fucking torn apart. I do always think, the language barrier, like I don't really yeah. know what he was saying or how he said it. Or there's differences there, comes off bad, but I, I won't really like crush him for that. But the way his teammates spoke was pretty telling. Yeah, and you uh, you can't do that. And uh, Jim, playoff baseball comes down to so many small things. I mean the the bit the first Braves kind of rally was Donaldson fouls one off and it just goes on the other side of the netting. Yadier Molina's trying to catch it through the netting. Uh, and then next pitch, he gets hit by the pitch, and then Marquecas hits a chopper, and that's playoff baseball. So, um, you know, Acuna made two outs on the bases. Uh, he got caught stealing in the first, which I don't mind. He's testing it out, but you're also testing out Yadier Molina, who this dude's been through a lot of rodeos, man. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough look, and uh, I'll say this for for my guy, uh, Ronnie, who I've I've been with him all year because he's so talented – uh, if you have that press conference like you just had, you better go out and play great, brother. And I mean, there's a chance he does. Uh, but I, I think it's it's tough. It's tough that the two stories here are kind of the Braves because also shout out to the Cardinals. We haven't given them enough love all year. They come out, take game one with having Jack Flaherty in the hole for game two and then going back for two home games after that. Huge by Michaelis to like get it together after the first inning. Right. He only allowed they had, three they hits had dudes in the getting loose in the first in the pin. Yeah. Good for him. And then the whole pen did pretty good besides Martinez at the end, which is kind of the other storyline here. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Bader, I was kind of rough on Bader because he's been so awful offensively. And then yeah. he's, he manufactures a run with his legs. Now in the stat sheet, none of that's going to look good on his averages and shit like that. But Good for him. So, but uh, Carlos Martinez comes in. He gives up the two-run home run to Acuna, and now I will I will say this: Acuna celebrates that home run, and I love bat flipping and celebrations and stuff. And everyone has their own code, which is kind of inter- weird. Right. When you hit a meaningless home run down four and you cut the lead in half to two in the ninth after making a mistake earlier in the game, I think that's a time where you probably shouldn't pimp that home run. He very much plays the game like it's an individual feat. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, and he's uh, he, he's going to have to win some people over the rest of the series, and like he still very much can. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it just looks so much better if you hit that home run head down around the bases and tell your teammates you're up next, and, which Freddie Freeman was. And then when you really hit the home run that takes the lead, go fucking nuts. Do Jose Batista yeah. bat flipping. like? But you can't just – I mean, come on, dude. It's a bad look. Anyway, bad look yeah. by Carlos Martinez, too, who like wanted to talk shit, and Yachty grabs him and puts yeah. him under his wing. Like, dude, uh, we're not doing that. You kind of sucked. 
I'm I think they're already out there, but I don't know them well. But uh, any Carlos Martinez Yachty story that you know, please feel free to tweet at me. And the ones I don't know, I'm excited to find out in ten years because I I one of them has had each other in a chokehold, and it's Yachty with Carlos in a chokehold. I mean, I think they're like brothers and friends. But it's happened. It's like uh, Jorge Posada and El Duque. They used to get in fist yes. fights, but they were battery mates. They like they didn't yes. want anyone else to catch them. But they used to get in fist fights in the clubhouse. Oh yeah, and I I think um, I, the only other thing moving forward I have on this game is, is it was kind of it was my final tweet about this game last night. If you're the Braves, um, you have Flaherty on the mound, and if you break him. That's a huge momentum swing because he's the Cardinals' biggest weapon. If you're the Cardinals, you're sitting high off last night, and you're saying, "Man, if Flaherty shoves, and we've got two at home, like this is our series." Well, unfortunately, um, I think for the Braves fans and and Acuna is that if Flaherty shoves and they lose and they're down two zero, and then they go on the road and they lose and they get swept, the main storyline is Acuna. I don't think yeah. he can break that, so they need to win a game. And it's it's insane how quickly a storyline can turn on you. The the young center fielder that was on path on pace for forty forty, um, young stud is now potentially if they don't turn it around, going to be looked at as like a lackadaisical, selfish player. And that's baseball. Yeah, and I want to counter anyone who's thinking this because I saw like on my tweets and stuff like they didn't lose the game because he didn't go to second. Yeah, that's. Two separate issues. It's still a problem. Yeah. Just because murder exists doesn't mean that kidnapping is okay. Yeah. Well. That's no, that's true. I read if that. If you're like book. gonna, if you're saving the kid from a bad situation, I don't know. Oh, a good kidnapping. A good, a friendly kidnapping. Child Protective Services. I guess there's good murders too. If you murder a bad, uh, let's not go down there today. Holy smokes, Jake. Speaking about a good speaking someone? about a good murder. Ooh, Dodgers Hello. beat up on the Nationals. Boing, boing, boing. Uh, I don't even count it as it was a close game cuz what happened was if you're beating the Nationals and they have to bring in the back end of their pen ish, you're going to have a great time. You're going to pinch hit yeah. a rookie and he's going to hit a home run. Then Jock's going to come up and rock one. They scored two runs in the seventh and two runs in the eighth, and I kind of don't count them, but good for them. I got to burn. I count them. You got to burn? All right, here we go. On your mark. Get set. Burn. Across the country, Patrick Kurt Corbain in the Nats Natitude Teen Spirit face off with Walker Ferris Bueller, who did not take the day off. Top one, more like Walker Corbin, as Patrick gives out four free passes. Dodgers put a one on the board in the first without a hit. Both starters would lock in as the only other run scored until the seventh was on a Howie Kendrick Lamar error that really killed the Nats five. 2 nothing L.A. Bottom seven like Jerry Gergich driving at top speed to his timeshare. Max Muncy, two RBI single to open it up. In the eighth, Gavin Deluxe as he homers in his first postseason at bat. Wow. And the Dodgers prove they're not jocking on you as Peterson goes off the pole. Nats get dominated. Bueller's a stud. Dodgers win 6 nothing. The off the pole shot was so cool. Very cool. It was kind of a meaningless home run, but just because it hit the foul pole, it's always cool. Because you see how much force they're actually hit with when they come to a halting stop. It's, uh, it's, I'd say a good equivalent would be a missed field goal at the end of the game. If the missed field goal just goes wide right, you're like, oh, missed it. If that missed field goal goes off the post, bring down the stadium. Real quick, Yankees roster got announced. You want to hear the surprise? Get your reaction yes. on it. Tyler Lyons. He did it. He made it. Dude, I went I went through his game log the other day, and he's been, like, okay after his first appearance. I don't care. I mean, if he pitches, we're in trouble, so I don't care. Yeah, we're either done really well or really badly. 
So Corbin had a ball of nerves in the first inning. I didn't see it because the games overlapped, which sucks. But four walks in the first is not good. And I believe he was still wild, but someone saved him after after like a walk. Someone was, went up there swinging. I believe. Yeah, Pollock walk, Pollock walk, and uh, baseball is a sick sport. So we've got a no contact first inning here, Jim. Pollock walk, Freeze struck out, Turner struck out. So we've got two outs, two strikeouts. Bellinger walk, Ta- Chris Taylor walks, and then Muncie walks to walk in the run. Seager grounds out to first. Um, oh yeah. So I saw some tweets like, baseball. "What are you doing, Seager? Why are you swinging at the second pitch?" But he could be saying, yeah. "Well, he's probably gonna throw me a cookie." Because he just walked in a run, so whatever. Yeah, you just can't play that game. It's you want to play that game so bad, but try hitting a baseball. And if Seager hit that second pitch down the line for a double, I bet you would have been fine with that. Yeah. Then then Corbin settled down, and then the fifth inning, he's got two outs. He walks Bellinger on a close three-two pitch. Chris Taylor singles on a hard ground ball. Rendon made that amazing stop. Uh and then Muncy reaches on a fielding error by Harry Kendrick, which was right through the wickets. So the first two runs, the Nat- I sound like a Dodgers hater or whatever. The first two runs, like, good on you by the Dodgers, but you were kind of gifted them in a way. Like a no-contact Ooh. run, it's good that you took your walks, and then at the end they have the home runs, but... A little bit, but I mean, if in the Yankees game tonight, the stadium's going nuts and a, and a Twins pitcher walks in a run, you're going to be like, oh, that Yankees environment. So a little love to the Dodgers there. Good environment, too. No, yeah. you're right. You're right. But And then at the end, man, who are those pitchers that came in? Yeah, well, we had <laughs> Fernando Rodney, who stole the show. But before um, him... Before him, it was... Uh, they went Corbin man. to Rainey. Rainey, that's um, right. And then Rodney and then Strickland at the end. They've really got Doolittle, mm, Hudson, and that's it. And like Doolittle and yeah. Hudson are kind of a wash show. I don't know, man. Strasburg's going to have to go off tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, and the the Nationals formula is Strasburg for seven and then match up Doolittle and Hudson. Like, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they're, they're fucked. And uh, maybe Fernando Rodney. Do you, you have anything I'm else on the Dodgers on game? Gavin Lux with a pinch hit home run in the World Series or in the world in the in the Whoa. first first playoff game ever. That's awesome for him. Um, the only other the the only other drum that I've been really beating. Well, a <laughs> Juan Soto. Uh, enjoy Adam Kolarek because you're gonna see him every game. Yeah, that sucks. Yep. <laughs> um, and then I, I'll say the other thing, and I. I I've been hammering the drum on this. It's my key for the Nats. Um, well, it used to be a dual key. It used to be Trey Turner and Adam Eaton. Because, Jim, I was doing this whole thing, like maybe move Soto up to the two-hole so you get him more at bats, but it really makes the depth of that Nationals lineup too shallow. So I think Adam Eaton is really the key. I'm bought in on Trey Turner. I see why he's so special. He's got a lot of skills. He's been given great at bats. If Adam Eaton could put it together, he had a nice walk yesterday. They could use a little more from him. But they just they need to set up Rendon and Soto because that's how they're going to score runs you think Kendrick should stay in I mean two errors oh I'm benching him um I I know his bat has been good um but you've got Ryan Zimmerman a guy who's like a face of the franchise and that defense at first last night was just unacceptable and I mean the the even if it's just a one game um and Zimmerman goes 0 for 4 but he plays a solid first base then you tell Howie Kendrick like we need that man because that's unacceptable yeah all righty, let's uh, we'll take a quick break before we come back for the uh, preview of the four games today. All right, what's up? We're back. Four games today, Jake. Yeah. Four. Count them. One, two, three, four. I don't want to drag this episode out forever, so we're going to just yeah. kind of go quickly. The first game. Let's bang Let's bang out. Oh, you want to go an actual time schedule? Yeah, let's go in order. Okay, I like that. The first game is Rays versus the Astros. Glass Rays now Strozer. versus Verlander. Um, 
I mean, we both are hammering the Astros. I think they're just better. Glass now, I saw him get nervous in a game against the Yankees. He was just like, not nervous. He was just, nerves is not the right word. I apologize. He was juiced. Juiced. He was too high. Like up. as juiced as you can be. He was like <laughs> shaking and like crazy yeah. and twitching and veins stuff. in his neck. Yeah. So we'll see how Glass now comes out. Cause I mean, if, if they rock him in the first, or if there's like an error made behind him or a call doesn't go his way, I'd be interested to see how that plays out. Verlander's a rock. I expect seven strong out of Verlander. Yeah, and I, I think, Jim, something you mentioned there that I think is a, a big what to watch for here is that it, the pitching matchups are a ton of fun. If these young guys can bring it, this if you like good pitching, this series is going to be a blast. But like you said like an error or a ball that kicks off a glove or an infield single or something like that. If that happens for the if that happens against the Astros, like Verlander or whoever it is says, "All right, well, now I'm going to have to strike you out." The Rays, your mindset just being new is like, "Oh crap." Like infield single and now Jordan Alvarez is up. And I I think that's going to be big if the Rays can dodge those moments, um they're going to give them a game cuz the Rays have this uh, what do I want to call it? Like a steel house of cards with their pitching in their bullpen. Like it's piece by piece and it's a lot of impressive pieces. But if one thing goes wrong, uh, the house of cards is broken. Yeah. Matt Duffy has good numbers versus Verlander in a very small sample size. Four for eight. Duff man. That's, I'll take that off Verlander. No extra base hits. And I think what's funny, no, it was pretty the Yandi Diaz thing, how impressive he was in that wild card game. It's all righties for Houston. So uh, I don't even know if Yandi's getting the start today. You're probably going to see uh, <clears throat> G-Man or maybe one of the Lau guys, Lau Low. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Austin Meadows has a home run off Verlander, so that's fun. A lot of people do this year, though. Oh, uh, my final raise note. I mean, Houston has them outmatched um, on, in the field. I mean, the players, it's Austin Meadows, and that's kind of it. <laughs> um, but I, I'd love to see Austin Meadows introduce himself to the national stage because he's really good, really good. Kiermaier's got 12 plate appearances against Verlander. How many hits do you think he has? Zero. One. Yeah, I could see one infield single. <laughs> All right. Next up, Cardinals versus Braves. We got Jack Flaherty versus Fultonevich. Fulty versus Flaherty. I mean, <clears throat> Flaherty might have nerves. The Braves have to win this game. The first inning is everything. Because, like you said, all the bad shine on Acuna um, with the top of their lineup, they showed it in that last inning. Like, you're not going to get through the top of that lineup four times. You're just not. Yeah. Um, and I I think uh, they need to come out and fl- your best chance on Flaherty is that first inning. His first need inning of playoff. Ba- yeah. Yeah. First inning of playoff baseball. Acuna, the lights are on you, dude. You'll be the first batter of the game. You need to do something special. No probably Homer. Um, I mean, there's a good chance. Like that's how talented the dude is. Um, but. Get get on base, give Albies, give Freddie, give Donaldson a chance. Um, and if you can beat Flaherty, you you can kind of, you've neutralized this series just a little bit. Flaherty's been amazing. We've been talking about him nonstop on this show because he's deserved it. He's not, like I said this yesterday, he's not like Verlander in my mind. Like, he's not a lock for seven strong innings right now. I would he's not, not be a lock. surprised either way. He's not a lock right now. Um, we could be saying a very different thing tomorrow morning. Oh, I mean, that's if he comes out today with nerves of steel and does what he does, then I'm like, oh, shit, he's going to be a problem the rest of the way. But I yeah, got to get this he, first start to see what he's working with. Him and, uh, him and Walker Bueller are fighting for the torch from Verlander. Dude, Walker Is Bueller's that, so fun to watch. Yeah. And it, the, he just the little throws things. himself at you. The little things that Bueller does too are special. Like when he covered first, um, like it was one of the speedsters, and he just—I think it was Turner who was one of the fastest guys in the lead. And there was a dribbler to first, Justin and he just Turner cooked. is one of the fastest guys in the league. Trey Turner, Jim, um, and he—he uh, 
he he toasted him to first. But yeah, Wa- Walker Bueller was so impressive last night. Um, but yeah, Braves, you just have basically get to Flaherty in the first. And I mean, do they need something special from Fulty? Because it's not like they can piece it together. Yeah, they need some innings out of him. Damn. And uh, he's like the fourth guy in that rotation pretty much. Hey, Fulty, be a, be a hero. Do it. Do it. We're, we're, we're rooting for Fulty today. The 7 o'clock start, Yankees versus Twins. Jake, my stomach's in knots. I'm nervous. I don't get to be an innocent bystander who can poke fun and enjoy both sides of the baseball. I will be nervous as hell. It's Paxton versus Berrios. Berrios has a terrible history versus the Yankees and at the stadium. He was young. He didn't see the Yankees this year. Paxton has been really good, 10-0 and down the stretch. It's his first playoff start, and that has me a little worried. Like, like I'm the same way with Paxton as I am Jack Flaherty. I need to see the first inning get successfully completed so that, like, you're just yeah. kind of in there. And, I mean, James, uh, the better comparison over Flaherty is probably Patrick Corbin, uh, the, who those were two guys that were on the Yankees' radar. They traded for Paxton instead of shoveling money uh, for Patrick Corbin. Uh, no offense, Patrick. Got to save that money. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, this will sound like a cop-out, especially after what I just said about the last game, but first inning Paxton was an issue for three quarters of the season. The dude was like the worst first inning pitcher around baseball, never mind playoff nerves, never mind how good the Twins are versus lefties. There's some stuff there. Um, if Paxton shoves in the first inning, I'm, we're blind Yankee fans anyways when we want to be. If Paxton shoves in the first inning, the game is over. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, but I, I am. I think the Twins are going to come out swinging for home runs. Obviously, they the hit the most in the league. But <clears throat> this Yankees team hit the second most home runs, but they don't – it's not home run or, or bust with them. They, they kind of play to the short porch – they make that swing. When you do that, you find yourself getting a lot of singles and doubles anyway because you're kind of going the other way with pitches. So you got, like, Judge who says swing for home runs, but you got LeMahieu, Urshela, Gardner. Even Glaber will give you a good at-bat. That's not home run or Glaber, bust. Glaber gets one home run swinging at-bat. But I'm, but I'm saying, it, from a standpoint, I think the Twins, and I think they should be, their strategy in the first inning should just be home run, let's fucking hit a 1,000-foot million foot home run to rock Paxton's world where I think the Yankees might be a bit more settled in their approaches and and try to quiet down the stadium um yeah and I I think what you're saying I, the control the zone has been the Yankees motto all year um hey I mean twins if, if Barrios can find it um it'll be interesting and I this used to be a thing last year Jimmy we haven't we haven't seen it too much this year but it could be interesting in this series a one run lead might be the worst thing for either team that's down one because every hitter will go into homer mode to try to tie it up instead of that like get get on on base base, let's get a rally going kind of kind of extra inning rules yeah the last game is the dodgers versus the nationals game two strasburg versus kershaw good matchup now kershaw this is a good game pressures on strasburg because he doesn't yeah. have a bullpen behind him, and his team is down one nothing, and they're on the road. Kershaw actually comes in. He doesn't have to be the dude. Like Maybe that will help him yeah. out. He does not have to be the dude because Walker Bueller's that dude. So Strasburg, I think all the pressure's on him to go seven strong. Yeah, I think you, you, you have to. It's, it's kind of not a discussion. Strasburg has to give them seven uh, to give Hudson and Doolittle a chance, however that matches up. It's um, so different than the Yankees. Like, Paxton, if he goes seven strong, it's like two innings of bonus points. Like, they, yeah. Boone has said, like, <laughs> no, we're almost, using our bullpen no matter three. what. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I thought that was interesting, Jimmy, the other day, and I, I, fra- I think I phrased it pretty well because I said this could matter or this could mean literally nothing. There's only two teams that want to go to their bullpen in the playoffs left. There's eight teams. The only two that are excited to bring someone out of the bullpen are the Yankees and the Rays. Um, yeah. And I just think it's it's funny in this era of, of baseball and relief pitching and everything that we're now we're at this stage of the playoffs. All of the NL teams are pretty shook. <laughs> um, 
the the only team you can make an argument for is the Astros, but Presley's taking a step back. Um, their guys are kind of unproven in the playoffs, and you're taking the ball from Verlander and Cole, more importantly. So I, I just think that's it's it's interessante. You got anything else you want to talk about? I don't know, man. I'm excited. This is a... Uh... It's going to be a long day, um, the best kind of long day. No, know what I just got excited for? There's going to be a moment today when we're – it's like the probably the eighth inning of the Yankees game, and we're going to think of something from the Astros-Rays game and be like, that was today? Oh, I mean, after the Yankees play, we have to record our Talking Yanks recap while the Dodgers and Nationals are playing, and then they're going to be playing. Yeah. So, uh, so follow along on Twitter, at Talking Jake, at – John Boy underscore. I uh, I'm like gifting these games and covering them the same way yeah. I do every Yankees game. Today will be a little harder, but it was funny because someone like a lot of people, Jake, that don't they follow me but they don't watch Yankees games. They're like, dude, you're getting these gifts up so fast. How are you doing yeah. that? And I was like, oh, you don't. They probably see all the Yankees gifts and don't realize that. They're Welcome within, to the like, Thunderdome, bitch. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, how do you do it? I'm like, oh, I sit at my desk, I don't have a life, and I work really hard. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, well, A, I want to give a quick thank you because we, the, the numbers for the podcast and for everything are awesome, so thank everyone. Um, and B, I went to my, uh, my, my girlfriend gave a speech thing at her work, and I went, I was doing good boyfriend stuff for once in my life, and um, a couple of the people know me, and they know the baseball stuff, and they were like, they're like, so you, you are you going to be able to go to any of the Yankees games? And I, I, I was like, no, it doesn't really work like yeah, I, that. I got asked, I got five DMs yesterday. What games are you going to? I said, no, I work those games. Yeah. You follow me. Yeah. You got to know that I, I can't go. Well, whatever. You look like, All right. Look like a coder. Thank you guys very much for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being supportive. Spread the word. Enjoy it. I hope all your teams win besides you, Twins fans. Boom.